Welcome to the Jericho Force Podcast, where we learn how to integrate faith into the work that we do. Don't conform to the world's way of doing business, transform by doing business God's way. Here's our host, my husband, author, speaker, teacher, encourager, and stewardship coach, Jason Davis. What's going on, everybody? My name is Jason Davis, a.k.a. Mr. Fortify, and welcome to another episode of the Jericho Force podcast. And here on the Jericho Force podcast, we talk about how we integrate faith into the work that we do. And I've got to tell you, I say this a lot. I'm always excited for each episode, but I'm going to say it again. I'm excited for this episode because our guest today is uh, someone who I've admired uh, from afar. He's a powerful man of God, he and his wife. Uh, But before I bring him on, let me introduce him to you. Bob Loddick found himself at his breaking point in his early 20s, overwhelmed by debt and stranded a thousand miles from home with only seven dollars to his name. After crying out to God for wisdom and discovering a simpler and far more effective approach to money, he reached a level of financial freedom he could never have dreamed possible. Having a paid off house by age 31 and even reaching a personal goal of giving $1 million by age 40. For the last 15 years, he shared his best lessons with over 52 million readers and listeners on his award winning blog, SeedTime.com and Seed Time Money Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Jericho Force Podcast, Bob Loddick. Bob, what's going on, man? I am excited to be here, Jason. Thank you for having me. It is an honor. I'm excited to chat. Absolutely. Well, Bob, we know that uh, you, you, God has graced you to do some great things there in your bio. But for those who don't know you, for for the ones who may not be a part of that 52 million, <laughs> just give us a little bit of a little bit of background on uh, who you are and uh, kind of what brings you into 2022. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so my story um, really kind of began at my breaking point financially, a little like you were talking about from that point. And out of that, God just kind of began leading me um, down a path of learning about money and realizing I didn't know what I didn't know. And uh, and in that journey, part of that journey, you know, because I think God does this a lot where he does things through us. Um, You know, we go through things and then he uses that for us to be able to help other people who are going through similar things. And, you know, so a few years into my journey, I kind of began a blog just talking about what I was learning as I was going through it, more or less. And um, in that blog, just kind of began to take off a little bit and move forward. And a couple of years later, I was doing that as a full time thing. And um, and so that's kind of been how we got into this whole thing. I never thought I'd be a financial person talking about finances or anything like that. But this is God's plan and, you know, we're just walking in it. And so that's kind of what has led us um, to where we are today. Wow. That's awesome, Bob. Uh, oh, Bob, uh, uh, such a big part of that that process is being able to walk um, with a wonderful spouse along the way. So give us a yeah. little bit of insight on, you're like, hey, I didn't like set out to do this is just kind of how God worked things out. But as, as you know, Bob, from being a, 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 a married, a married man, uh, what did that look like as, you know, honey, I think this is where God is leading us. And what did that kind of look like as working this together as husband and wife? Yeah. Yeah. So we're very different. Linda and I are um, like, she's amazing, but just from a personality perspective, um, the way we're wired is very, very different. And so I tend to be a little bit more of the saver type, more of the spreadsheet nerd. And um, I like to call her a high performance spender of all of our money. <laughs> and so she's gifted in that area. And so, um, you know, so like so many married couples, because this is actually really common. I mean, I talk to couples all the time and it's very rare where I meet two couples or I meet a couple where both of them are they're just the same in how they spend money and how they grew up believing money and their, you know, all this stuff. Like everybody had, comes to, you know, get married and finds themselves very different than their spouse. And so we were no different and we had to kind of work through that and figure out how, 
why did God bring us together? You know, and understanding that we're different, but that doesn't mean that she's wrong or that I'm wrong or I'm right. You know, it's like, we're just different and we have Mm -hmm. to figure out how to make this thing work together, you know? And so, uh, so that's a journey of course. Um, but there's a lot of, uh, I think humbling that makes that process a lot easier when you humble yourself and you realize, you know, cause for me, that was a big part. Cause I just thought, well, this is math. Like, you know, money is just <laughs> math. It's just a, n- a number to solve. And therefore the way I'm doing this is right. And God just had to kind of correct me and humble me, uh, to realize that the way that she thinks about money, um, is actually like he put her in my life for my benefit, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and once I realized that and got a hold of that, that really, it improved my life ultimately, because I tend to be someone who, you know, could save it all up for when I'm 65 or 70 years old and never enjoy the moment that I'm in. Whereas he put her in my life to help me enjoy the moments that I'm in. And, mm. um, and she's done really great at that. So anyway, that's a small piece of kind of how all that came together and we can go wherever you want from there, but. Absolutely. The one one more question before we kind of pivot from there. You talked about, and I know you, you and your wife, you've worked with a lot of different uh, people on finances and you've seen a lot. But for you, when you hear people say, you know, it, it's just math, and then you kind of got someone who's a little bit more, you know, emotional with it, uh, any big stories from customers or readers that – jump out to you where it's like, wow, this is why God wired us differently. And we actually need one another. So you have any, any stories that you can recall off the bat? And, and this is for those people out there, like, like you said, maybe there's someone out there like another Bob that's like, well, all you got to do is, you know, carry the one and, 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 and budget this yeah. way and it should be fine. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, something that comes to mind, we were in church, maybe a year, maybe two years ago, uh, this woman came up to me and said, your budgeting course <laughs> saved my marriage. Like wow. just runs up to me in church and like, t- and I didn't know her from Adam, like, and just tells me this. I'm like, what? Like, Cause I, you know, I didn't know who she was. I didn't even know that she had taken our course. I didn't know any of this thing. And I remember like just talking to her and I ended up, she started sharing like kind of their story and, how this had helped and they had been fighting about money for 17 years. And this was the thing that finally got them on the same page, got them in unity. And so I ended up calling them and hopping on zoom. It's like, I want to hear your story and hear everything. Mm. And, um, and I think kind of what I took from that, because that similarly, like they were very different people, but Mm. they couldn't find a way to get in unity and this is the thing, you know, um, I forgot what verse is specifically, but that one about one can chase a thousand, two can mm-hmm. chase 10,000, you know? And so there's like a 10 X multiplier when you're in unity, you know what I mean? So there, there's so much power in it. And I think that's why the enemy fights so hard to keep us out of unity with our spouses mm. in a lot of areas, but I think especially in our finances, because once we're on the same page, it's like, it's absolutely game changing. Yeah. And so this couple, you know, had struggled for all those years to get on the same page. And as a result, um, you know, just found themselves in a very, very challenging spot. And, you know, and she, they both admit it. It's like, we were close to calling it quits, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, and so anyway, I guess all that to say, there's power when you can get in, you know, when you can find that. And so if you have whatever the thing is that might be holding you up financially, that's keeping you from getting you getting in unity and being on the same page, um, keep, keep fighting to get Mm. in unity, keep finding, keep fighting to find the right tool, the right, um, organization for your finances, whatever that thing might be, because it's worth, it's worth fighting. It's worth Mm -hmm. fighting for. Don't fight your spouse, but fight for unity, you know? That's good, Bob. And you're my, what you saying that reminds me of the verse when Paul talks about fighting the good fight. Now, obviously, we know preaching the gospel, but what you just said, I think, was key. Like unity is worth fighting for. Yeah. And uh, when that translate over over to a domain such as money, I mean, that's huge. And so yeah. I, I love just your takeaway there like hey don't you know let's spend less time fighting 
your your spouse and let's spend more time to you know what does it take to establish unity in our marriage and our home and our family with our children uh, i think that's gold bob yeah absolutely that's good stuff. Speaking of gold, Bob, you, you recently released uh, your latest book, uh, Simple Money, Rich Life, Achieve True Financial Freedom and Design a Life of Eternal Impact. Uh, so, Bob, you've obviously uh, established author. Uh, when you got the idea for this book, like what went into writing this one? What made this one maybe different from the other books you've authored? Yeah, so I had self-published a couple books over the years, and um, and I hesitate to even call them books, and not because I don't believe in them or think that they're helpful or valuable, but like the amount of time that I put <laughs> into those books, um, without exaggeration, is maybe one one hundredth of the time oh. that went into this book. So this book is a summation of everything that God did on our financial journey of me being completely broke, like you mentioned in the bio, you mm -hmm. know, broken down with $7 to my name, like completely lost and clueless financially to the highlight reel of God just doing some amazing things through our finances. And for me, the biggest victory being um, reaching that goal of being able to give away a million dollars by age 40. Um, so this book is all of the mindsets that we use to get from A to B, as well as like the specific practical things that I think actually made a difference because there's millions mm. of practical things that you can do, but we don't need millions of things to do. Like we need the actual things that are going to work and make a difference for us on our financial journey. And so, um, and so that was really what the book is all about. Like how do I, as much as possible, create the formula that we followed to go on this journey so that other people um, can go on whatever financial journey that God has for them as well. Mm. So good. And, you know, Bob, as you, as, as a reader steps through this book, I love the sections because you, you gave a lot of practicality and you have it broken out into uh, saving, earning, giving, enjoying, and then, you know, having a 21 day kickstart. And so with, with saving, you know, what's the, the logic there? Anybody who's financial professional kind of understands that, but what is, uh, Starting with the foundation of saving, what does that do? Yeah, well, let me come. Let me step back too, because the, those four parts you mentioned, it's mm -hmm. based off of kind of a framework that we've always followed, mm -hmm. which is based off of an old John Wesley quote, where he mm -hmm. said, um, "John Wesley, anybody isn't aware, preacher, a couple hundred years ago, uh, and he had this quote, and, I, and he talked about this a lot, but he said, I earn all that I can, as much as I possibly can. So he was a preacher, he was a writer, and he was preaching nonstop. I mean, on horseback, like that dude was making the rounds. And he was working as much as he can, earning as much as he possibly could. And the reason why, and we'll get to it in a second. So he said, I do that. I earn everything I possibly can. And they said, I save as much as I can. And by save, he meant like reduces expenses, okay. um, cut back on unnecessary spending. He said, I save as much as I can. And I do both of those things so that I can give as much as I possibly can. Mm. And so what I love about John and the way that he saw things is he saw himself um, – he just understood that God had gifted him with an ability to speak and to preach, and that he could use that to not only impact the world, but then the um, the compensation from that would now be another avenue for him to impact the world in a different way. Hmm. And so, I, I don't know, it just really resonated with me, and I loved that, that God has given each of us, I mean, anyone listening, God has given you gifts and talents and things that he's put in you that you can use to earn an income or to increase your income. And then by doing that, you know, when we're operating our giftings, we are impacting the world in a positive way. But then we can mm -hmm. also take the byproduct of that, the earning, and then, of course, you know, uh, take care of our family and pay bills and do all that. But if we look at 2 Corinthians 9, like there is a certain amount that is meant for us and a certain amount for us to be giving away. And as we do that, all again, 2 Corinthians 9, great chapter to read. Uh, in terms of New Testament, money, giving, that whole philosophy. And, uh, and anyway, we see how these pieces work together. And it's like, I'm just absolutely convinced that as we operate in that, as our income increases, as we continue to push the gas on giving as much as we can, pushing as far as we can go, um, 
I don't know. I just, I've seen in our lives and I've seen this in our, so many of our readers and students lives, God just does really, really cool stuff over and over again. So anyway, that's the big picture of how all the pieces work together. I know you specifically asked about saving and we can go mm-hmm. deeper into that, but, um, but yeah, I'll just stop there and let you direct me from there. No, that, that was a wonderful way to break down the framework, uh, Bob. And I love that, that quote from, from John Wesley. It just, it just puts everything in perspective and it is also powerful too, right? Cause yeah. he understood his why, um, and, and, and it being God driven because, and, and maybe this is kind of a, another place to take it, Bob, is some people, um, they battle with like they they know that they need to earn an income for their family, but they're kind of stuck in this. Well, is it OK to, to think about or dream about um, having more, not just for your family, but be able to make an impact? Like, can they actually allow themselves to go there? So could you just yeah. comment on that for a second? Because I think that that impedes people to a certain perspective of what's possible for whether that's multiple streams of income or, mm-hmm. um, you know, even talking to their spouse about, hey, you know, I, we've got our nine to five. Maybe I could start a business and earn us, you know, have a side hustle. So just give your yeah. thoughts on that. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of thoughts swirling in my brain here, real quick. But. <laughs> At the end of the day, like I don't think there's anything wrong with having nice things. I don't think there's mm-hmm. anything wrong um, with having money in the bank or any of those things. Like when I read the New Testament um, in the Bible holistically and I look at all the different verses about money um, and not just pick one single verse, but look at a holistic picture. But think, look at how Jesus talked about money. The common denominator, the thing that I consistently see is that it's all about our heart. Mm-hmm. And it all comes back to our heart. And that's why, you know, before we get into the earn section of the book, I specifically have a chapter just focusing on our hearts because it's so important that while we're thinking about earning more money, like, you know, because it's like there's no doubt that there, there, there's a danger in yeah. this area with our money. Um, you know, Second Corinthians um, or I'm sorry, Second uh, Timothy 6 talks about this, mm-hmm. just about um lusting after money and the deceitfulness of riches and, um, you know, people being led astray by chasing after money or wanting more money. And so there's definitely a danger there. And that's why I think having our hearts in a right posture is incredibly important. Um, but the, the piece that I would add to that, um, that I always thought and that I found out, wait a minute, I'm not thinking about that right. Is that if I just am like, well, Okay, I'm not going to try to have a lot of money, um, and therefore I'm safe from the deceitfulness of riches. And it's like, Uh it doesn't work like that. You can be as broke as broke can be and still be lusting after money. And in fact, I think there are a lot of people who are completely broke who are absolutely lusting after money. Like Uh they're, you know, so it's not, it's not a matter of how much money you have or how much money you're earning. It's something that we are all vulnerable to. So it's not, so I guess the point is, is like, there's no like, well, I'm just not going to try and do anything with my gifts. I'm just going to go do mediocre work at my job. Like that doesn't get you off the hook, you know? Right. And I would argue that that actually um, is burying your talent mm. in terms of going to the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, like that whole illustration where you had the one servant who was nervous and buried what God had cured with the, the guy in the uh, parable had given him and didn't use it. And didn't make anything of it. Um, whereas the other two who took what they were entrusted with and multiplied it, um, they were rewarded. And so anyway, my point in saying all that is that I believe God has gifted us with things. And the best thing that we can do is make the most out of them. And oftentimes, mm-hmm. I would say most times, as we do that with our work, with our profession, the byproduct of that is earning more money, mm-hmm. you know, and the heart component I think is incredibly important. So I think we have to have the heart, uh, the right heart posture with why we want more money. Mm -hmm. Um, but if we're in that right spot with God, um, there's a lot that we can do for the kingdom, you know? Yeah. That's well said, Bob. And I I love the way you 
reiterated this. It's like, look, a lot of times it's easy to think about the guy or gal that has a lot of money and, oh, yeah, you know, that you see all these stories and they're well documented. We've kind of seen how that plays out, whether it's in the media or from personal experience. But you said, hey, even if you if you're on the other side of the equation where you don't have a lot, you're not let off the hook. It's yeah. money is one of those things that um, you know, reg- wherever you are in the socioeconomic scale, it, it you can absolutely be obsessed yeah. with it. And I think that's that's a, a great summary of the money mindset is it doesn't matter where you are, you don't get let off the hook of not of continuously allowing God to do a work in your heart so it doesn't become an idol, whether you're, yeah. you know, kind of more on the, uh, you know, poverty line to middle class to well-to-do to just a complete, you know, multi-millionaire, billionaire. So I, I yeah. like the way you summed that up. Uh, you know, in that first section, Bob, I, in this book, I like how you give – practicality. And as I was looking through the chapters, which it's wonderful, I I have my own copy, but I was really intrigued by the, because no matter how much this topic comes up, it is always like this weird angst about it. And that's uh, automate, the power of automation. So I'm looking at, you know, chapter five, automate, never depend on willpower. And as a numbers guy, I'm like you, Bob. I'm like, oh, my gosh, just, you know, automate it. Don't think about it. But uh, th- this topic comes up over and over again. So as we step into some of the practicality, talk to us about the power of of automation, Bob. Yeah, so I think the thing for me that I realized, you know, and get, going back to my journey, because, again, mm-hmm. like I was not born with a silver spoon. I was mm-hmm. not born knowing how to manage money well. <laughs> You know, I just did, I, I had to figure out a lot of these things the hard way. And, um, and I just discovered that it didn't matter how much willpower I had, like I wasn't consistently doing the things that were most important to me financially. Mm. And as I began studying more and more wealthy people, I realized they don't necessarily have any more willpower. They're not smarter. It's just that they automate the most important things. Like, that's it. They Mm. make the things that are super automatic. They remove it from the realm of willpower. And so they don't have to think about it. They just make sure that those things are happening automatically. Um, You know, and as a giver, like, this is something that was so powerful to me. Like, it wasn't until I began automating that I finally became a consistent giver. Because before that, it was, well, it's the end of the month. Let's see if I have some money to give. Um, or if I remembered to give, or maybe that week I didn't go to church. And so I just didn't give, you know, there were always reasons, always excuses, but as soon as I made it automatic, it's like now like clockwork, we have been consistent givers for years and years and years. Mm. And because that was important to us. And at the same time, like, all right, saving for retirement. We want to, I don't want to have to work till I'm 90. And so I want to be able at some point to be able to work less or at least have the option of doing that. And so, you know, we've been automatically saving for retirement and it just, happens. We don't have to think about it. And it's amazing. And I was talking to one of our um, employees not too long ago and, um, and their financial situation, um, things a little bit tight or whatever. And so we were talking and anyway, and she had, she's been automatically saving for retirement for 10 years or something. And, um, and I was talking to her and like, Hey, have you looked at your retirement accounts in a while? Mm. And she's like, no, I haven't. I'm like, go look in there. And she went and looked in there and she's got like $140,000 saved for retirement didn't had no idea wow. but she's just been automatically plugging away each month putting money in for 10 years and then sees that and she's like whoa this is crazy you know because this particular moment might feel a little bit tight but because she made it automatic she's now sitting in a situation where you know she's in a really good spot mm. um, based on her age you know for for retirement you know so my point is there's just a really big power to it when you can and um i highly recommend it that's huge Absolutely love that, folks. I can't tell you uh, the power of automation, and you'll really enjoy that chapter in Bob's book. Uh, another one, Bob, especially coming out of the uh, the pandemic here, um, you know, credit card debt. A lot of folks, there's, obviously we know there's different types of debt, but you touch on 
uh, credit card debt specifically here, and you actually give three rules for mastering uh, credit cards. And we know in the U.S., you know, many reports it's anywhere from 800 to 900 billion dollars of credit card debt in the U.S. at any given time, and we know it's gone up quite a bit throughout history. But talk to us with the practicality of those three rules, yeah. mastering credit cards. Yeah. So we, Lynn and I got married and we had a bunch of credit card debt and we were a mess kind of with our credit cards. And so we stopped using them for about seven years um, and just strictly used a debit card. Uh-huh. And then at about the seven, eight year point in our marriage, uh, long story short, I was seeing some benefits, why it might make sense for us to use a credit card. And so I'm like, all right, let's just try this. But if we're going to do it, let's create three rules, keep ourselves in check. And then we kind of developed these over the years. Um, and so the first one is that we would never use a credit card for discretionary expenses. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that for me meant I'm not going to take this card to Lowe's um, and just buy whatever, you know, discretionary being something that obviously we don't need. Um, and for her, it's not taking it to Nordstrom or maybe me, it's not, you know, using it on Amazon, whatever the thing is, where it's like there's a temptation to spend. And so we use the credit card for non-discretionary expenses in things like maybe our cell phone bill or Mm -hmm. our electric bill where there's no temptation to overspend. You know what I mean? It's like, we're just paying the bill that's due. Um, and we, and by eliminating that point of temptation, uh, it's just been super helpful because it keeps Mm -hmm. us from getting in trouble. Um, and the other part of that kind of the second one along the lines is that we would never, carry a balance. So it's just kind of a rule we made. If we ever carry a balance from one month to the next, then we're just going to cut it up and be down with it. Mm-hmm. And so by doing those two things, like we keep ourselves out of a position where we're ever paying any interest to the credit card company. And uh, and that's really, really the, the main way, the key to using credit cards successfully and not getting in trouble, making sure that you're using it to your benefit. Um, and then the third rule was really just that we wanted, if we're going to have a credit card, we're going to make it work for us and actually be beneficial, like more mm. beneficial than having a debit card. And so for us, what that meant was, um, honestly, I nerded out and opened 34 different credit cards to figure out which <laughs> one was going to be the best for us. So I don't necessarily recommend that. But um, but point is, is that find, figure out what credit card is going to be best for your situation and what you're trying to do. Okay. And so if it's travel. If you want to travel like in the U.S., then there's certain credit cards that might be better for that. If you just want to get cash back, those credit cards might be better for that. Um, you know, there's all kinds of different cards based on your different um, personal situation uh, that might be beneficial to you. But the point mm-hmm. is, is, like, if you're going to get one, like, don't just get one because they gave you a T-shirt to sign up for it. Like, there are <laughs> great cards with great rewards out there. And make sure you're using the right one. Yeah. I like that, uh, Bob. That when I saw that chapter, I said, "Oh, that's going to be a good one." Let me let me ask him about yeah. that because uh, a lot of people don't have, um, you know, those hard and fast rules around. You know, like you said, well, you know, they gave it to me, or you know, yeah. I got I got an advertisement in the mail, and they said I was eligible. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gotta fight yeah, don't, don't let them come to you. You go to them. You find the best ones. Like, and, and if anybody's curious, like uh, our website, seedtime.com slash CC, like I have my top recommendations on there. Everybody just wants to check it out. It'll give you a head start anyway. Awesome. And Bob, we'll make sure we'll have that in the show notes, people. So if you speaking yeah. of being in a digital age, if you're worried, oh, my God, what did Bob say? We'll have it in the show notes. And you provided the perfect segue, Bob, because another thing I wanted to touch on going back to the earning point and being in a digital age, I love the title of this chapter, Four Keys to Earning More in the Digital Era. Talk to us yeah. about your thoughts on writing this chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh- yeah, like we t- we've talked about this a little bit already in this um, episode, but there's something about like the first key that I believe all of us should be following is that we want to keep chasing um, the opportunity to work within our giftings. Mm-hmm. Okay, so our God given giftings that are give us that's our unfair advantage <laughs> against the rest <laughs> of the world, and when we're operating in them. Um, like the wind is at our back versus mm-hmm. the opposite. There's this quote by Einstein that I've always loved. He said, 
Um, if you judge a fish by his ability to climb a tree, he'll spend his whole life thinking that he's an idiot. And and I don't. It's something about it like has always resonated with me because, um, and I think it's because I've had seasons like that where I've felt like a fish trying to climb a tree, where it's like mm. this just isn't fair. Like when there's a squirrel next to me that is created to climb trees. And it's like, I'm not meant to be climbing a tree. I'm meant to be in the water, you know, mm-hmm. or if it's an eagle in the air, whatever the thing might be. And, and I think there's a lot of people who are like that fish trying to climb a tree. And maybe it's because they've found themselves in a job or they just went into the family business or they just followed their parents' footsteps and did what they're doing. Or this is the first job I got out of college, like whatever. Um, and I'm not at all advocating running out and quitting your job today. Like, but the point is, is if God has gifted you to do something, like run in that direction of trying to turn that into an income, because mm-hmm. there's never been a time in the history of the world where you have a better opportunity to turn whatever you are gifted at into an income. Mm-hmm. Like we are in the era where there are YouTube where kids who are playing video games on YouTube making seven figures a year. Like yes. there are no limits anymore. <laughs> like there are absolutely no limits. And so it doesn't mean that there's going to be a well-worn path to get there or a four-year degree that you can get, you know, to do whatever that thing is, but God can get you there. And, mm-hmm. and he did that in my life and I'm seeing him do that in so many other people's lives. And so, so that's the thing I think is just so important um, to chase after that, that situation where you're getting paid to do what you're gifted at. Mm, that's good. And and you're absolutely right, Bob. I mean, the, the game has changed. I mean, we we live in an information age and there's a lot of data and information that with, like you said, your skill sets, gifts and talents, you can monetize them. Because, I mean, Bob, I mean, what, 15, 20 years ago, if, if you could said, hey, you know, you could earn seven figures for playing video. I mean, people would have laughed at that notion yeah. now. You know, the kids have the last laugh, right? (laughs) So it's just a great, a great time to do that. Last point about the book before we get to some upcoming things you have uh, for the rest of the year and in the future, Bob. And the the, the title really excited me. You can't, in my opinion, you can't talk about money, especially God's way, without mentioning generosity. And so – when I saw the chapter about secrets of six figure givers, one, this little mind blown because upon seeing that some people might go, wow, like I've never even given six figures before. So I I thought that was really, really cool to see a a, a title like that. And just uh, talk to us about that because I think that's another area, just like earning income. I think, generosity is another muscle that can be flexed. Like what would it look like if we gave like a ridiculous amount of money to, to honor God and to help causes and, and uh, you know, spread the gospel. So talk to us about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I grew up kind of hating giving. I'm not Mm -hmm. gonna lie. Like I just had no desire to do that. That was just wasting money. Like you're just Mm -hmm. throwing money away. And, uh, and God's done such a work on my heart and just, um, I think taught me a lot in this area. And now it's become one of Linda and I, like one of our favorite things to do, like one Mm. of the biggest sources of joy in our lives. And, and I'm not, and I know that sounds like the right Christian thing to say, but it's Mm -hmm. like, honestly, like there's a selfish motivation to some extent because it's like our life is just better as Mm. we have continued to press in and step up our giving and push as far as we can go with it. Um, and I'm just absolutely convinced that it's the best way to live. It's the most joyful way to live, the most fulfilled way to live. Mm-hmm. And so my encouragement to anybody listening is just, yeah, continue to stretch that muscle. It's like, as you do, you get stronger, you know, and anybody like taking a working out analogy here, it's like, you know, the first time you go into the gym, you haven't been there a long time and you do whatever, um, get on the bench and you start (laughs) doing some bench press or something, you're like, your chest is going to be sore. Like, yeah. uh, And so it's okay that it, this doesn't feel natural and it's okay that maybe can't do as much as you could have when you were in high school or something. But, but the point is that as you exercise and do that, like you're getting stronger, you're moving forward. And then on top of that, like, you're just going to feel better. Like Mm. I don't go into a gym and see people who are there like day in and day out and ask them, how are you feeling? And they're like, oh, I feel like junk. Like, I don't know why I keep coming to the gym. It's like they do it because they feel better. 
Yeah. Like it just feels better. And so it's the same with giving like, and yeah, anyway. So, so that's my soapbox on that. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Now, Bob, uh, this is such a, a great book. Where can people uh, get a copy uh, of this so they, they can take advantage of uh, all the wisdom that you've poured into this great work? Yeah. I mean, it's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Christian Book, all the places. Um, yeah. I don't think there's anywhere you can't find it. Um, I get more and more libraries are picking it up. We just released it a couple months ago. Um, but yeah, I keep finding more and more libraries that have it. There's a few airports that have it in like the um, whatever section where they sell a few books and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, bags of chips and stuff. But um, Amazon um, is a staple, of course. Love it. Love it. Well, folks, you know where to find it. We'll, we'll, of course, have everything in the show notes, but pretty much you can grab your copy of Simple Money, Rich Life anywhere uh, books are sold. You know, Bob, and with, you know, going out promoting this book and doing this work, I'm sure that you always have things rolling around in your mind about, you know, maybe what's next. So as you kind of continue talking about this book, uh, what are some exciting things you have uh, on the roadmap? You know, we're in the last uh, headed into the last quarter of 2022. So what would you say is, is next for, for yeah. Bob and Linda Loddick? Yeah. I mean, one of the things that we're working on at the moment is just, um, so we have a handful of online courses. Um, you know, so some people like to read books, some people like to actually take online courses and stuff. And so we have a handful of courses, you know, we have a budgeting course, we have a course helping people get started investing and things like that. So we're just trying to update those, like continue. I'm a constant improvement type of guy. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of our courses we've updated multiple times, just continue to improve them, make them better. Um, so we're just continuing on that process right now. And then um, into the new year, uh, I think we're going to really just start um, trying to increase our social media presence. And, um, you know, so we're on Instagram right now and YouTube, big places you can find us. Uh but yeah, continuing to hit the gas on that, I think, is where we're headed the next year or so. Love it. Love it. Well, Bob, it, it's been such a pleasure for you stopping by to hear on yeah. the Jericho Voice podcast. You've given us a lot of nuggets of wisdom and, uh, and uh, several reasons to go out and get our own copy of the book. So I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to uh, join us here on the Jericho Force podcast. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I thank you so much for having me on. Sure thing. Well, folks, that's all we've got time for today. Uh, remember, we'll have all the information in the show notes. You can get uh, your copy of Simple Money, Rich Life, uh, everywhere books are sold, certainly on Amazon. And we'll have Bob's uh, social media, YouTube page, all their resources. He and Linda will have their resources in the show notes at um, – JerichoForce.com uh, in our blog section. But, Bob, thank you so much. Uh, we will definitely have to have you back sometime for sure. Yeah, sounds great. All right, folks, you know how we leave things here on the Jericho Force podcast. Don't conform to the world's way of doing business. Transform by doing business God's way. We'll see you next time on the Jericho Force podcast. Thank you for listening to the Jericho Force podcast. You can catch us live on Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time and on demand. Check out JerichoForce.com backslash podcast for more details. To learn how to live out your faith in the marketplace, grab a copy of Jason Davis's book, Fortify, Being Rooted in God's Plan for Work and Business, available on Amazon. You're listening to Joe Worldwide Podcast.